Hi guys and girls. <laughs> um, in the YouTube community, I would just like to take a moment um, to show you my homemade incubator that I finally got it um, set to where it needs to be. Um, her name is Matilda. So this is Matilda. Matilda is made out of a recycled and repurposed styrofoam cooler that came from a gifted shipment from Omaha Steaks about two years ago. I didn't want to put this huge hunk of styrofoam in the landfill, so I kept it around, figuring one day I'll have a purpose, and now I have a purpose. So great. Um, let's take a look. This is Matilda. This is um, a wire hen that I got at the Goodwill store for $2.15. I was looking for either some hardware cloth or a wire cage of some sort, something to be able to mount all of the electronics into. You can see that I have a light in there, a light bulb. Uh, that is from a lamp. I had this ugly lamp that I absolutely hated that um, I inherited and I just gutted it and I it was so happy to do that. Um, so that's that's the heat source. I also uh, had to shorten the cord a little bit to take out some wire to wire it to the thermostat. I purchased this thermostat on eBay and it's not a good thermostat for incubating eggs. The seller advertised that it was for egg incubators. Uh, but when I took it to my electrician, I found that it was just a hot water heater uh, incubator and I'm just doing the best I can with what I already have and because I didn't want to fiddle with sending it back or any of that, so I'm stuck with it. Uh, next time, I will spend a little bit extra money and get one from a reputable egg incubation supply website. And back here in Matilda's um, tail feather area, I have mounted a uh, computer fan that I got from Radio Shack for $17.99. Um, I mounted everything with some recycled copper wire that I pulled from an old burnout motor. Um, because this is a, is a bad thermostat for incubation, I had to make a lot of adjustments over the course of several days in order to get this incubator close to the temperature it needs to be which is 99.5. You can see it's actually spot on right now, but it does fluctuate up and down as the light turns on and off. Underneath the incubator, I've got, I think, six or eight um, pint-sized jars of water laying down, which are acting as heat sinks. And a heat sink is just an item that will hold the temperature, um, and it will not fluctuate as much as the air does. So those are uh, what is keeping my incubator at a steady temperature. Without them, the temperature went up and down 10 degrees. Uh, by playing around with how far away the thermostat was from the light, I was able to narrow it to 6 degrees. Um, but now with the heat sinks, I'm only just a couple of degrees. So uh, if, you, if you want the cheap thermostat, which I don't recommend you do, you need lots of heat sinks. So I have a baking rack lying on top of the heat sinks, uh, and I have some drawer liner on top of that for a little bit smoother of a surface. And I also have some more river rocks under there. Those also act as heat sinks, and you can see some of the river rocks right here. Because I had to raise the level, I needed to create space for when they hatch so they don't fall down below. So I put some river rocks here. They act as heat sinks and also um, a space filler. So while I'm on at the windows, both of the windows are made from plexiglass material that I got. Uh, for both of them it was about $5.50 over at the Home Depot. I attached them with just simple duct tape. I did everything myself, all the cutting, all the wiring, all the electrical, everything I did myself. This is my very first homemade incubator and um, the reason why I didn't mount things in the actual walls is because um, if this turns out okay and works well, which it should, um, I can take Matilda out and put her in any old container and make a bigger incubator. I'm thinking I'm going to be able to fit between 20 or 25 eggs in here. 
Let's take you over to the side and show you what I did here. And now I, I have this on both sides. I have uh, a removable air vent where I just reused some corks I already had laying around. And I poked through with a skewer some holes and then I uh, widened them with a chopstick and then I inserted little straws and snipped it for, um, for, air, thr for air flow. So the, there's four on the side and there's four on the other side. I'm just going to be manually turning the eggs by hand because um, although I had several suggestions from people on how to do an, a manual turner to turn all the eggs, um, I just don't really have the space and the stuff and the equipment on hand that I need to be able to do that. So I will just be turning by hand. So um, let's take a look at the temperature. It's at about 101 right now. Um, a couple minutes ago, it was at 99.5. So a couple minutes from now, it will probably be down to 98. So you can see that although um, it's within range, uh, it does fluctuate. And I'm, I'm just hoping that with all the uh, the heat sinks and that uh, I've watched it for several days, it hasn't gone over 101.5 and it hasn't gone below um, 98. So I'm hoping that, I think 98, maybe 97.5. But anyways, um, I, I've actually stood here and watched as the light turned on and off and wrote down the the time or the temperature when it goes on, the temperature when it goes off, and I took an average and the average came out to exactly 99.5 degrees. So I'm hoping that that would be just fine. Next time I'm going to go with a better thermostat. The thermostat is very important. So uh, that is my incubator. My cost comes in at less than $50 considering that a lot of items were repurposed or recycled, reused, um, and so forth. The wiring was a huge hassle for me. I'm not electrically inclined, but as you can see, um, someone as simple enough as myself was able to figure it out. And that's that. That's Matilda. So hopefully Matilda will give me a couple of them things. <laughs> and these are some of my chicks so, from my other incubators.